say yes. Okay. Yes. Today, we are traveling from Asturias in the north of Spain down to the Douro region of Portugal. The Douro River carves its way through the mountains of northern Portugal and creates a unique climate and soil type which single-handedly produces the world's port wine. So we made it to our Airbnb in Torre de Moncorvo, which is in the Alto Douro region. And I was pretty impressed because our Airbnb has a three-bedroom house in the village and it's only $40 a night, so it's pretty amazing. Um, Torre de Moncorvo translates literally to Tower of Raven Mount, which I think is a pretty amazing dramatic sounding name. Torre de Moncorvo is a quaint village in the remote northeast of Portugal. It's lifted up in the mountains near the historically strategic meeting of the River Douro and River Sabor. Its location was ideally located for the mining of iron ore in the surrounding mountains, and the town was known throughout history for its smithing and forges. I can only imagine that a symbiotic relationship of trade existed between the fertile agricultural Sabor Valley just below and the metal-rich town of Torre de Moncorvo. You're trying to eat the raw olives? What do you think about all these olives, Seb? You have to soak them in water. You're right. You have to cure them in, in a brine for quite a few months. These aren't so yummy off, right off the tree. Do you want this property? Yeah, it's an amazing property right there. It has so many vegetables like that. Uh, tomato plant and lemon tree. Do you want that to be your little farm? Yeah, they have a big, they have a big problem here. The vineyards of the Doru, which produce the world's port wine, grow from the banks of the river, soaring up seemingly endless terraces into the sky. Because of the predominant steepness, they are still mostly harvested by hand with the help of donkey-drawn wagons. Traditionally, special port wine transport boats ferry the wine barrels downriver to the city of Porto on the Portuguese coast, where the port will age in adegas before being exported. Is that your guys' house? It's not, that's the bathroom because I see toilet paper there but someone went to there. So that's the toilet right there? Yeah. Where's your kitchen? Here. Where's your guys' beds? Here. So this is Castelo de Marialva, another amazing castle in the interior of Portugal that practically feels like it's been forgotten by the world since the Middle Ages. So although most of the walls that you're seeing now were built during the Middle Ages, there was originally an important Iron Age Castro on this very site. So like I've said in other videos, a Castro is the Iron Age equivalent of a fortified town. And the people who inhabited this town were tribes called the Ahavarush. The Ahavarush were a tribe which belonged to the Lusitanian nation. And the Lusitanians were a proto-Portuguese people, essentially the ancestors of the modern Portuguese. 
The Lusitanians became well known to the Romans even before Rome invaded Iberia because they played a major role in Hannibal's invasion of Rome in 218 BC during the Second Punic War, and the Lusitanians wreaked havoc throughout Italy during that time. When Rome finally won the Second Punic War, they invaded Iberia and were especially cruel and merciless to the Lusitanians, who always chose to die in freedom rather than be slaves to Rome. In one instance, the Roman legions massacred and enslaved around 30,000 unarmed Lusitanian civilians in one day. This triggered what we know now as the War of Fire, where the shepherd warrior Viriatu led his scattered nation to make Rome pay for their crimes by defeating Rome in battle four times and kicking them out of Lusitania. The greatest battle was that of the Forest of Trebola, where the Lusitanians ambushed and annihilated an entire legion. It's very possible that Viriatu visited this very Castro to inspire recruits for his cause, almost 2,200 years ago now. Later on during the Middle Ages, this area actually became very depopulated because of the vicious wars that were going on between the Islamic kingdoms of southern Spain and, all, and the Christian kingdoms of the north, like Portugal and Leon. And um, Don Afonso Henriques was the famous uh, Portuguese king who ex expelled the Moors um, farther and farther south. And he's kind of a war hero in Portugal. And he issued a charter for this town, um, giving incentives, financial incentives and benefits to people who had moved back so that um, this area could be repopulated and also guarded um, from further attacks by the Moors or, and also with the border with Leon because we're quite close to the border of uh, Spain here. São nossos, os nossos ou amendoes? Amendoes. Wow. E são, são todos cultivados aqui? Tudo, é daqui. Cultivados aqui? É daqui, é daqui a entrada. É de onde eu tenho os animais. Sim. Até lá, meio pequeno. Uau. Carrots and what else? Um, sausage. Sausage. And what else? Um, a farmer. <laughs> Homemade sausage. Sausage. That's right. This is a typical northern Portuguese dish. We're already halfway through it, but it's chicken with rice cooked. Um, in wine and chicken blood, its own blood, in the oven. It's pretty amazing, actually. Mm. Mm. Can I try some? Yep, in a second. Do so, you like that olive juice? Yeah, yeah olive juice. We have loved staying in this region of Portugal. It's such an incredible mix of history, food, culture and nature, and there is so much more to see. Stretching from central Spain to the Portuguese coast and the city of Porto, you could easily spend a lifetime exploring the banks of the Douro River. <laughs>